Hello there. Hello, wonderful students. You are welcome to class. In your previous lesson, you learned personal finance. In this lesson, I'll be teaching an interesting topic, which is trial balance. A trial balance is a list of debits and credit balances of all the ledger accounts extracted on a given date. This is to verify the arithmetical accuracy of books of accounts. Now, to achieve this, there must be a debit and credit section in the account, which is the receiving and giving section. All right, now, they are guide for preparing a trial balance. We're going to take this guide one after the other. Once you get used to the guide for preparing a trial balance, this account will not be difficult for you to handle. Okay? It begins by knowing the writing to credit and debit. Debit, which is placed on the left-hand margin, is referred to as the receiving section of the trial balance. It begins with crediting of assets. Assets are things that are permanent in nature, such as land and building. These are to be debited, all right? In your trial balance, it has to be debited, which is placed on the left hand of your account. The next to be debited is premises. This is also to be debited. Remember, we are looking at the guide in preparing a trial balance. You need to get used to items that are to be debited. So land and building, secondly, premises. And then you could also debit motor vehicles, all right, furnitures and fittings. Remember, these are assets, okay? Assets are referred to those goods or property that are permanent in nature, all right? And then expenses. Expenses refers to the things you need to spend to acquire some items in the business. And it is to be debited also. For example, rent is to be debited. And then the next is stationary. These are things you use, items you use, like write your writing tools, papers, and the rest. It refers to as stationary, is to be debited. All right? These are classified under expenses. The next to be debited is advertising. You debit advertising. All right? Remember, in advertising, you have to spend to advertise, so it is debited. And then the next you debit is wages and salaries. You pay your workers, and so it has to be debited. Okay? And the next to be debited here is drawing. Drawing refers to withdrawal of cash by the owner of the business for his personal use in anticipation of profit. Okay, so this is to be debited. The next thing that needs to be debited here has to do with the cash, which could be cash balance. Cash balance here refers to money owed but yet unpaid. This is also to be debited. 
The next item that can also be debited is referred to as bank balance. That is your money left in your account. And the last but not the least here to be debited is losses. Remember in business, there could be profit or loss. So losses here are to be debited. All right. So the following items, take note, are items that are qualified to be debited. All right. That will take us to items that are to be credited. Are liabilities, for example, creditors, bank overdraft, loan, ATC, and credit income, such as commission received, rent received. These are income, and you credit them. The next item you could credit is capital. You credit capital, okay? Remember, capital is the money you put together to begin a business. So in trial balance, you credit capital. The next item that you could also credit in trial balance is also known as profit. You credit profit such as gross profit, net profit, discounts received, commission received, are to be credited, all right? So they are on the profit, so do not forget that in trial balance you credit profit. Now let's go to ruling of trial balance. It's in this particular order. The first is the particulars, then you have the debit and the credit. Remember, like the guide in ruling your trial balance, you debit drawings, expenses, assets, losses, all right? And then you credit capital, liabilities, income, and the rest. Now, trial balance could be used in the following ways. Why do we use trial balance? Number one, it shows ledger items at a glance. Secondly, it will help check the accuracy of entries made in the ledger. It also gives first-hand information to the bookkeeper about errors committed. That will lead us to errors that do not affect trial balance. The first transaction means transaction completely omitted from the book. The second means transaction posted to a wrong account. The third means double entry observed but made wrong entry. All right, I'll explain that later. Let's listen to this. Up to this point, we have learned how to analyze transactions and identify their debits and credits. We've also learned how to journalize these transactions and post them to the general ledger. These first steps of the accounting cycle are repeated over and over again every day until the end of the fiscal period when financial statements are created. A fiscal period is a period of time reported on the financial statements, which is typically a 12-month year. Although many businesses have a fiscal period that mirrors a calendar year from January to December, they don't always have to. Businesses are encouraged to have fiscal periods that follow the natural cycle to decide to make your fiscal year end. The first step in ending your year is to create a trial balance report. A trial balance is a report that proves all the debits and credits balance at the end of the accounting period. Basically, a trial balance lists every account on the accounting system, even accounts with zero balances, in chart of account order. Then it lists all the balances of those accounts as either debit or credit balances. When all of the balances are listed, the last step is to total all of the debits and total all of the credits. If total debits equal total credits, then you know that the accounting equation is in balance. 
If the totals don't match, then you know that mistakes have been made somewhere in the accounting records, and those mistakes need to be corrected before creating the financial statements. Although the trial balance is a very simple step in the accounting cycle, it's also a very important one. The trial balance helps to catch simple accounting mistakes before they make it to the financial reports. This step helps keep the financial statements correct so that stakeholders can have confidence in the accounting records and make sound management decisions based on the financial reports that come from these records. All right, that will bring us to the end of this lesson. See you next class and please stay safe.